Hello friends, this is Vinod Singh again from Travel Tech Guru and uh, today I'm here with my 11th video blog and today's topic is about NDC, uh, New Distribution Capabilities, which is an XML standard which has been launched by IATA uh, just to help airlines uh, to sell not just limited to tickets, they can sell the ancillary services, they can uh, push out the uh, rich content uh, about their product uh, and, and as an end consumer be it a B2B travel agency or an OTA or uh, a meta search or, or probably a retail customer going on to an OTA website uh, and I can have access to all those uh, rich content available from the, uh, from the airlines with the help of the NDC XML standards. So as, as an IATA it's, it's an XML standard that uh, uh, a technology company which an airline can employ and, and they can develop based on these standards and they have to be minimum NDC level 3 certified in order to uh, uh, provide these ancillary services or the rich content with the help of the NDC uh, uh, standards. Okay, So uh, the benefit primarily airlines are getting benefit out of the NDC standards as uh, earlier they were just limited with the help of the GDS, they were just limited to uh, selling the tickets with the GDS uh, platforms and GDS as you already understand, it's an oligopoly market. I mean, there are only three players in the market, be it Amadeus, uh, Sabre and Travelport. And there's no fourth player uh, in, in terms of the GDS technology for the air ticket distribution that you can rely on, primarily for the uh, scheduled carriers, uh, but with the invent of NDC, all these been taken care of by the new XML standards laid out by IATA. Okay, uh, but uh, once before going deep into the NDC standards, I would like to highlight how things were functioning before this NDC standards been actually been launched. Okay, so earlier, or I would say in, in a traditional way of uh, distribution, uh, distributing the airline content. Uh, airlines primarily have to work with three systems. Uh, the first one is ATPCO, which is Airline Tariff Publishing Company. So they have to publish their rates into ATPCO, which is again a third party, third party uh, technology platform. The second technology company they have to work with is Adifact, uh, which is primarily uh, the company who manages the airline schedules. Or, or the scheduled carriers uh, timetable primarily. Okay, uh, and again, Edifacts have two technology platforms that offer the uh, Edifacts or, or the scheduling services. One is the OAG, and the other one is InnoData. Okay, so these are the two technology platforms where an airline can tie up and upload their schedule about their about about their flights. Uh, the third system which they have to work with is uh, working with the availability that's coming directly from the airline central reservation system okay so when gds came came into the picture they basically combined all the th three tech platforms and aggregated the content from all these three te tech platforms and created an offers and then presented these offers to the intermediaries be it ota travel agencies or to the retail customers okay so that's where uh, GDS comes into the picture and that's primarily the importance of uh, GDS. But the major challenges with the GDS is, is uh, Edifact is one of the traditional and old standard technology platform which has been used by the GDS and Edifact is only been able to publish the basic information, uh, the flight schedule, uh, the availability all uh, of, of an availability of the seats and the prices coming from ATPC. Only these three uh, informations are being published by the GDSS, but they were not capable or uh, I mean, uh, upgraded enough to upload, uh, uh, push the other content from the airlines, which includes the rich content, primarily the ancillary services about the seat map, about the meal preferences, about the uh, the facilities that you get on board, be it a Wi-Fi or be it the shopping experience for the merchandise that you get or access to the lounges. So all, all, all these information which is highly profitable business for the airlines or not been able to push through the GDS technology platform. 
okay this is one of the pointers the second point uh, and and the limitation working with the gds con uh, technology platforms is the uh, uh, lack of access of customer information to the airlines okay so with with the gds in place uh, airlines would have access to only limited information uh, just about the customer uh, name and and the booking details uh, that is the limited information an airline gets from the third party or the intermediaries who are booking via the gds platforms okay so because of the lack of the information about the customers they were not able to prioritize the offer they were not able to personalize the content uh, they were not able to build upon the data to enhance their sales and increase their business that was the second major challenge that's been faced by by the airlines uh the other challenges which were faced by the customers who are primarily buying the air content is uh through the gds they are just uh, limited to purchasing the f- uh, flight say uh, tickets and seats and uh, they don't have access to any of these ancillary services which they might have to directly contact airlines post making a booking and there was no standardization in place there was no standard process in place that uh the travel agencies or the otas or or these intermediaries have to follow to book on the uh, ancillary services which was the major loss of uh, revenue for majority of the airlines okay so because of this challenge uh, they pushed it to the ita and ita came out with the ndc standard that's where the ndc uh, standards came into the existence okay so uh once once the ndc has been rolled out so it's also dependent on the technology platform that you are working with so it's the capability of the it company to work on as in, in as per the guidelines of the ndc standards and get the access to these uh, ancillary services or the rich content coming from the airlines all right okay so mm, the other challenge which most of the airlines faced was the oligopoly by these gdss okay because uh, i mean globally these gdss covers uh, the major majority of the flight tickets distribution and uh, because of the old structure of the technology they are working on they were not able to uh, initially they were not able to comply with the ndc standard but uh, in 2017 uh travel port was the first mover who became ndc level 3 certified then came in the saber and then came in the amadeus uh, so now all the gdss are ndc compliant so you can still have access to the ndc content uh, with the gdc uh, gdss itself so for a travel agency to connect every airline individually would be a challenge and that's where these ndc content aggregators came into the place like uh, mistyfly or or uh, fair logics these are some of the tech platforms who offer the ndc content they aggregate the uh content from multiple airlines uh, connecting their apis into their platform and uh, as as a travel agency or uh, as an end customer or or intermediaries i just need to connect with mistyfly or fair fair logics to have an access to the ndc content from multiple uh airlines and this also gives me gives the end consumer the advantage in terms of the cost and the technology because now they don't have to invest integrating multiple airlines they can just work with any of the aggregators and uh, all these aggregators are capable enough to manage the api standards manage the technology so that's the adv- advantage for the end consumers okay uh, i would just list down some of the benefits uh, working with the ndc platform and then i would also list down some of the uh, limitations working with the ndc platform personalization of the shopping experience because now airline have an access to the customer uh, data the customer information so they understand uh, the customer preferences the customer taste and based on the customer uh, information they can personalize the offer and push it to the uh, push it to the end customer uh, typical example would be the way you have access to the content coming through the netflix so netflix have access to the customer data point, data points what they like what they don't like and then uh, netflix primarily personalize the experience based on the customer interest and uh, as an airline you have the higher chances of uh, converting those customers into the paid customers okay so that was the first major point the second is as i already explained is access to the data points so uh, 
airlines were in, in a better position to use this data for their marketing activities, for pushing out the contents to the preferred, preferred set of customers and uh, to achieve higher conversion rates and eventually having a higher sales and revenue. So that was the major advantages for the airlines. The third one is the access to the ancillary services, be it the Wi-Fi, mail, uh, baggage preferences, uh, preferred check-ins, extra luggage, all those ancillary services, merchandise that you get access to through the within the airlines, within the, uh, in, inside the planes. So all those are available uh, through NDC standards and uh, you get more options, not just limited to tickets as, as a customer. And for airlines, they get more venues to sell out the content and again, eventually higher sales and more revenue for the airlines. Which I want to highlight is the product standout. Now, because uh, airlines were able to push uh, the custom offer to the customers based on their preferences, taste, their buying behavior based on the multiple data points they have access to now, they can uh, create an offer which is like which would stand out in the market, not like working with the GDSs, you have just access to the tickets, uh, availability and the schedule and the price. Okay, so with, with the help of the NDC content, they can have a specific offer that will suit to a specific set of customers and giving them more chance to uh, convert those customer and for the customer, it's a better user experience. They would have access to better content and eventually they are more satisfied than just access to the content. And probably they would be more loyal to the airlines as well. It's the efficiency of the technology platform, because as I earlier mentioned, uh, GDS is working with the uh, old tech platform, be it Adifact or be it any other ATPC or, or uh, CRS platform from the airlines. So uh, Adifact is primarily the oldest technology platform that the GDSs are working with. So with the help of NDC, they can have access to the latest uh, tech stack, uh, maybe working directly with the airlines uh, for, as, a, as a travel agency. Or for a tra for an airline, there's an advantage they can directly connect with the travel agency in case it's a big travel agency like Sea Trip or uh, Make My Trip Yatra or Tajawal or I mean big big giants in the market as they are. Uh, and for the travel agency, they have direct access to the content directly from the API. Uh, I mean, plugging their pipe into their tech platform or maybe working with the multiple aggregators, which I mentioned earlier, like Mystify or FailLogix or uh, other NDC aggregator, uh, aggregators, which are available like uh, airline technologies, one of them as well. So you can get the access to these NDC content from these uh, aggregators and you have the cost advantage, you have the technology advantage. So, uh, these are some of the advantages uh, working with the NDC content. But uh, I mean, given consideration to the, all these advantages, there are few challenges I would still like to highlight. Uh, I mean, the first and the foremost is the oligopoly of the GDSs. I mean, it's it's really hard to replace the GDSs. They have uh, much wider global coverage. They have uh, the best of the technology uh, in, in place. They have also best of the technology resources in place working for them. And now they have upgraded themselves to the NDC standards as well. Okay. And as you can see, only 65 airlines are available on the NDC platform. Uh, and uh, there are like more than 400 airlines which are you can have access through the GDSs platform. And giving consideration that GDSs have uh, upgraded themselves to the NDC level three standards. So uh, as, a, as a travel intermediaries or as a retail customer, uh, it would make more commercial sense with me to stick with the GDSs than switching to direct connection with the airlines or investing into the uh, aggregation suppliers for the NDC content and uh, integrating the new API and maintaining the API. So there is a new set of cost involved migrating to the NDC platform as well. That's again one of the challenges why GDS is are still the number one preferences for uh, the travel companies to make the airline tickets booking. Again, uh, in, in terms of the NDC aggregator, they are very, uh, limited players right now. Uh, you can count them all over your fingers. There are, I mean, few which I know is like uh, GDSs. All the three GDSs are NDC compliant now, as 
uh, travel port saber and amadeus so the aggregators would be mystify uh, fair logics airline technologies and i mean there are other tech platforms uh, that you can get the ndc content as well but then uh, the reliability of these technology platform and the stability of these technology platforms has to be taken into the consideration once you are switching into the uh, ndc content and last but for sure not the least is the advantage what is the uh, additional advantages that you would get once you switch into the ndc content okay that's that's the major questions for all the travel companies what is the cost and benefit analysis once you do and uh, uh, how much is the additional benefit that you gain out of investing on, in, in, into the ndc stack okay i mean so this is a brief about uh, what is ndc how why it's been rolled out what are the benefits what are the challenges uh, working with the ndc content so if you still have any questions related to the ndc probably drop in comments or uh, down the video i will try to research and uh, answer to all those comments uh, and please share this video with your uh, business partners industry partners so they would have more insight about the ndc as well and again if you have any questions related to travel technology any challenges that you are facing in, in terms of the travel business and you want to have a solution in terms of the technology platform to resolve those queries or, or, or those challenges that you're facing with. Uh, you're most than welcome, more than welcome to contact me, drop a comment down the video. And I would try to research and answer to all those questions and queries. So have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.